Now, I haven't done this yet myself. I played around a little bit with this, but, it, um, but one of the cool things I was thinking about with the segmentation tool in Google Analytics is that if you can find a way to make that connection in Google Analytics, they have a really cool tool where you can basically build a segment. And I was playing around with this where I took a sample data set and I looked at the yellow line here, which are CIOs people who are just CIOs versus my overall web traffic. And think about being able to segment in your Google Analytics or any tool, being able to say, I just want to see people who are CIOs, and I want to see how they path through the website. And what's cool about Google is every report is now filtered for that. So the, my favorite thing of all this that you can do is targeting. So hopefully most of you have heard about are using either a test and target or Google Website Optimizer, Wide Mile, any of these tools. But think about how cool it is. We think we're like studly that we could target based on past click behavior. So they've viewed this product page, so I could target. But think about if your targeting could also use all of your CRM data. So in our scenario, we had this guy, Bill Smith. Imagine that in our situation, we had done research and analysis that showed that if we could show someone who is at sales seven to 10 in the stage in the process, if we could show them a case study of someone who's in the same industry, same vertical as them, that we could close like 90% of the time. Well, maybe the next time Bill comes back, we show him this. And maybe the one, that one little kind of buy now, get five free seats, maybe we could just push him over the edge because we know that it's Bill, and we know that he's been there, and we're using the data from our website and our CRM system. Now, if we wanted to be really creepy, and I don't recommend this, you could hypothetically say, hey, Bill, I see your back. Dude, um, you know, why don't you buy our products? So this is what's really cool, and I, can, and I hope that you all can extrapolate this and think about the cool uses of how you could target on your website once you have both web and CRM data at your disposal. So the next area I'm gonna go into is the flip side. Now we have to be nice to our sales brethren and see if we can get them along with us. And what would happen if we could pass web analytics data into CRM? So let's talk about this. Now this is a really ugly version of salesforce.com. This is from 2005, and so you all have no excuses that you cannot pass web analytics data into CRM, because I was doing this in 2005. So when I worked at the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, this was my way of showing every salesperson that when they pulled up a contact record, here are all the web pages on the website that that person had viewed. Now, back then there were no APIs, no Twitter, nothing like that. This was manual. This was me using the Salesforce data loader. But think about the power of doing this. And as technologies evolve, there's gonna be even cooler ways to do this. One of the new things that our company's pioneering, and I, I think all the other CRM vendors will copy, is the idea of a news feed. This is our product called Chatter. So when I log into salesforce.com, my CRM system, I have a feed of all of my coworkers who I'm following, and you also can follow deals or apps. So one of the things is you could follow a, a deal that says, hey, this deal just went from say, sales stage five to seven. But how cool would it be if your web analytics tool could have an alert here, and I'm a sales guy, and I identified Bill Smith as one of the prospects that I'm kind of like working these you know, next couple weeks, and all of a sudden in my newsfeed, I see that Bill came to my website, and he just viewed two demos. How cool would that be? And how much would your salespeople start saying, you know, what's that web analytics thing you guys have been talking about that I've been ignoring you about for five years? When you show them what they're doing on the website in real time, in context, I think they're gonna become your new best friends. Now you also can use tools, and Erica mentioned this in the last session, there's marketing automation tools that do this, and so Eloqua is, is pretty sweet. They've got a really cool integration with CRM tools, and this is a way where you can just you know, outsource this if you don't wanna do the heavy lifting and just literally pump in what did Bill or so on do on your website. So I would recommend that you look at those as well. Now another thing that I've been doing at salesforce.com and I recommend, and I'm gonna be very careful, especially since I have Eric in the room here, and I'm not going to call this engagement, because I'm not gonna go there. But I'm gonna call this website scoring. Um, and I'll just show this, because this is an idea that we've been playing around with, and I just bring it up, because I think it's kind of fun, is our theory is we did some analysis and figured out which pages on the website tend to lead to conversion. And so we used you know, advanced things with Omniture participation, and we, uh, we identified, hey, if they view this page, like that's good, and if they view this page, eh, doesn't really matter. So what we did is, in, in our web analytics implementation, when someone hits our homepage, we scored it, and we gave it a point. If they view our product page, they get a couple more points. If they view our pricing page, whoosh, way up there. So what we do is we store for every person on our website, and I mean, don't 
I don't know, you guys will probably Twitter about this, but when people come to our website, we actually are scoring them a total score and we actually score them for each of our products. We have a sales cloud, service cloud, collaboration cloud score. So when you go into salesforce.com, we pass in a score. Now, this is not a lead score, and that's where Eloqua and Marketo and all those companies are good at, but this is a poor man's lead score. And the, re the reason we did this is our sales guys have so many people to call and contact, and sometimes they're not sure which ones to pick up the phone and call. And one of our thoughts was, well, if you got someone who's got a website score of two, and you got five other people, and they've got 50 and 70 and 80, maybe you might want to call the ones that have a higher score. You know, they're probably a little more qualified, they've probably been seeing more stuff, and you can have a more intelligent conversation, and maybe you can let the ones with lower scores kind of simmer a little bit. And also, what's really cool is most CRM tools have the ability to send out email campaigns, and you could use this as a new criteria. I want a cold market to the people that have low scores, but I want to really go after the people with higher scores. Again, taking website data, passing it into your CRM system so you could add happiness. Now, in our example, Bill had viewed a demo, and one of the things that a lot of companies do is they're really boring with their email marketing is they'll send an email. In this case, everyone who does a free trial at salesforce.com, you're gonna get an email, and you're gonna get five stages. But in this case, we look like idiots because we're gonna send Bill an email that says, hey, go check out this sales demo. Duh, I've already seen the sales demo. You know, how smart are you guys? Do I really want to work with you guys? Like, that's dumb. We could just skip that step altogether by just having our web analytics tell our CRM system, hey, he's already seen the demo. Let's skip him right to step two. And that way we keep them further, you know, kind of the always be selling, always be closing, keep them going down the pipe. Um, so the next thing that we want to talk about here, is, oh, I'm sorry. Um, is so last we don't think in this part um, here oh another one is sales cloud so this is an email that I got actually from salesforce.com is kind of funny um, I got this email I had been looking at sales cloud stuff on the website and for some reason I got a service cloud email and this just reminded me I wanted to bring this up as just an example of something that I couldn't believe that our own company was doing this first of all that they were sending it to me as an employee but second of all that I had not looked at anything on the service cloud and I had gotten this email when I was clearly looking at sales cloud stuff. So I think that's the kind of things that we want to try to avoid happening. Now another thing that I mentioned is salesforce.com and any CRM system has a funnel. And they always look at things like prospects, how many people are we getting qualified down the pipe. But one of the things they never really think about is what is the big population that they should be thinking about. So one of the things we've started doing is we've started telling our salespeople, listen, you need to include us in the process because if you think about it, you're only getting the certain number of prospects, but we could pass you how many people actually viewed forms on our website and how many people actually came to our website and we're trying to work with them to get our website metrics into their dashboard so they could see the huge population that they're missing and get them to understand that maybe they should work with us a little more because out of the 370,000 people, that's out of a million. I mean, think of the seven, six or 700,000 people we're not even touching, and they have no idea that those people are even coming to our website because that's not part of their universe. And I recommend that you make it part of their universe. So those are the two different sides of the equation. You know, one, we talked about why you should pass data from CRM into web analytics, and then the converse. So just to kind of summarize, um, wanted to talk about today just kind of this divide that really doesn't have to exist, but does oftentimes exist between these two worlds. Um, and to recap, our web analyst tools, great at capturing anonymous data tracking page by page website behavior, not so great oftentimes at capturing the post website success. On the flip side, we've got our CRM vendors that are, are the opposite. They're really not good at all of this miscellaneous data, but they are pretty good once people fill out a form. So the top items that I recommend that you think about considering when bringing these things together is again, adding these offline metrics, these offline success metrics to your online variables, leads, opportunities, pipeline, add that into your web analytics world. Segment all of your web analytics data by CRM fields. Don't be limited by the very few fields that we actually capture in web analytics. And see if you can use both web and CRM data to target your promotions on your website, test and target, and all those tools you use. On the flip side, when it comes to web analytics and CRM, I recommend that you try to find ways to show sales what prospects are doing on the website. One new vendor I've been playing around with um, now that I really recommend you check out is um, NetFactor has a product called Visitor Track. 
And it's really fascinating. You can actually look at by IP address and domain, they can tell you with pretty good degree of certainty what companies are on your website. And these are people who may not even fill out a form. So one of the things that we're playing around with right now is we have a list of all the IP addresses that are on our website and working with them to actually take what are the companies that those IP addresses line up to, knowing it's not gonna be perfect, but it's pretty close, and then giving our salespeople a list of companies that never filled out a form on our website, but looks like there's a good chance they may have been on our website. Maybe give them a call, maybe, and then there's a, and now we just happen to buy a company called Jigsaw, which is really cool, so we could actually look up those people and find out who are the right titles of people to talk to at that company. So there's a lot of cool things you could do with that. Um, but the general theme with that is just get sales and marketing to work more closely together, which doesn't happen a lot. But passing your KPIs from the web world, make that part of your sales world. Make them care about your website KPIs. They probably don't even know what a website unique visitor is right now. Make them know what it is and why it's important to them. Think about passing website scoring, and I'm gonna actually be doing a blog post on this in the next couple weeks to, to kind of explain the details of how you implement that so that you can help qualify leads, knowing that it's not gonna be perfect, but it's just another data point that your sales team can use to determine and that you could show how your website is impacting sales in the website in a positive way. And if you can, when you're doing email marketing or any other type of marketing, social media, try to intelligently market by using all of the data you have on the website and in CRM. So at the end of the day, if you kind of think about these things, I hope that this will kind of spawn some ideas, and this is kind of a new burgeoning concept, you know, the idea of how do we tie these things together, and I know there's a lot of people been talking about, you know, is this vendor gonna buy this vendor, and are these, is there gonna be a consolidation between these spaces, and I don't know, but I do think that you don't have to wait for that, and that you can start doing this, whether you're doing it in your two CRM and web analytics tools, or even if you wanna do what some more sophisticated companies are doing, is pumping all of this data into a marketing data warehouse, or something like, a, you know, an Omniture Insight, or, you know, Quantivo. So there's lots of different ways to do it, but I just wanted to kind of extol some of the benefits here, and if you think about it, just kind of go back to this idea of kind of, you got your chocolate, your peanut butter, bring them together, and you might find that things are better together. So that's all that I wanted to cover today. So I will open the floor for questions, and before you go, since you guys have been great and stuck around for day three, on a first come, first serve basis, so kind of reinforce it, I have a nice bag of Reese's peanut butter cups up here for the first people that come up afterwards. Um, and if you ask a question, then you get yours early. So, um, so that's it. That's it for now.